Sure. Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to get started. I'm D.R. Jones from Case Western, and joining me today are Megan Allen, also from Case, and Dan Weiss and Chris Woodson uh, from Loyola. There's more information about us in the handout. It's a print handout that is available in the room, and these handouts will also be on the web. Uh, the handout uh, summarizes some of the information we'll be presenting in uh, this program today. Our program is about administering exams on computers. We will not be discussing exam software. There are many opportunities at the conference for you to hear about exam software. Regardless of whether you choose to use exam software or not, if you decide to allow students to take exams on computers and not just use blue books, the way that you administer and support exams will change. Blue books don't freeze. <laughs> what we want to do today is present a series of topics and choices that you have to consider if you want to offer exams on computers. We will discuss how we have addressed those topics and the consequences. If you are considering offering exams on computers, you could take this series of topics as a checklist of things you need to consider. If you're already offering exams on computer, then hopefully our experiences may offer you some ideas about how you can address these issues. Our first topic is school profile. There are certain things you have to consider about your school profile. You need to be able to predict or think about how the demand for this exams on computer service will grow over time. How big is the demand going to be and what kind of resources do you have to meet it? Case Western has approximately 675 students. We don't have an evening program. We have certain uh, resources such as three computer labs. We do not have a laptop requirement. We are getting full wireless in our building by the fall. So those are some numbers and some resources. <coughs> we have been offering exams on computers since 1999, and we have seen demand increase every year. We have presented some of our statistics in the handouts. For spring of 2003, we offered over 1,000 exams on computers, and uh, almost 400 students took exams on computers. The most telling number, however, is that three quarters of our first year students for fall and spring to, for fall 2002 and spring 2003 took exams on computers. And these students, of course, will move on. So consider your school profile, the numbers of students, and the demands that are going to be made upon you, as well as your resources, such as the number of rooms and labs. Okay. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, Loyola with you and show you what we look like. Uh, Loyola has about 1,400 students in both a day and an evening program. Uh, we have been administering computer exams since 1998 with a variety of tools. Um, this past spring term, we administered over 2,200 exams. Um, you know, through a lot of planning, which you're going to hear about today, we were able to handle that and do it quite well and keep the faculty happy. You know, what we're presenting here today is not meant to give you some kind of, like, untenable thing at the end that your faculty are going to complain about. We've had good results working with our faculty. We're also seeing huge numbers of our incoming first year students wanting to use laptops. The laptops are becoming a part of what they have in class to take notes, what they go to library to do research with, and what they also want to take exams with. And so we're fully supporting them in those efforts as well. We administer all of our exams on those student laptops. We do not use labs. That's one area you're going to hear where our two schools differ. Um, and that's worked well for us. You know, depending on your situation, what kind of environment you have, what kind of amount of lab space you have, how much management you want to have of that process, you may decide to do it one way or the other. I want to take a look beyond the school profile now and start looking at some of the support structure that needs to be in place and how we're uh, attaining that at each of our schools. Oh, 
also click here. There we go. In terms of the support personnel we have at Loyola, our registrar's office, uh, there are about four people in there that actively take part in the exam process. Um, Chris Butson, our registrar, uh, do you want to speak a little bit about kind of the things they're doing, about room scheduling just briefly? Yeah, basically we operate all, the, all of the exam process out of an access uh, database and for the most part we do download everything from um, our, our administrative software. Um, at one time our office ran the whole operation including all the computer exams and as Dan mentioned now it's 90% you know, of our entering students want to use computers and the operation just came too large for our office. Uh, we had a changeover in our dean and our dean in the form of the law school as a whole that during the exams everybody's job description is out and the only job description everybody has is exams and that has helped us immensely uh, get support from the top and this obviously uh, trickled down into the um, IT department. Yeah, and in terms of IT support, um, all of our technicians, the ones that normally attend to laptop, uh, not laptop issues particularly, but uh, computer issues in offices and, and whatnot, pretty much have their job descriptions rewritten and so they're in full support of the exams. We'll talk a little bit about that in a while, but the support we offer is at the beginning, uh, before the exam period actually begins as students are setting up. Um, they, the technicians, including myself, come in, make sure the students have our software running. If they have any problems getting it going, we try and do some triage at the moment. Um, we've had every person get their computer going except for, I believe, in the spring exam, two. So out of all those exams, we had two people who couldn't get going. You know, and that's quite changeable because we're not working in a controlled environment at Loyola. We do not deploy the laptops ourselves. We're kind of using what the student brings themselves. That brings up a whole series of potential issues with how current they have updated their Windows environment, how current their other software is on there, what they've shut down and not shut down. Um, we do some training. We did some hand-holding, a lot of hand-holding this past semester um, with them in advance to make sure the computer environment was good. But that, that really is a um, questionable item. Um, we also had some folks from our Computer Resource Center library staff who took part in this. Again, at the beginning of each exam, they would come in and help get uh, things set up. Um, just to note for Loyola, though we're affiliated with Loyola Marymount, uh, a large university in the LA area, we are a separate institution with separate administration and pretty much separate support structure. So we don't receive any kind of direct support for exams from the main campus. Let's turn to what Case is doing. As far as support personnel, what we found is that, of course, exams have been going on at the law school for a long time, and many of the people who were originally involved are still involved, as at Loyola, the folks in the registrar's office, and there are three people there, continue to be involved with exams, including exams on computers. However, we've needed to add additional support, and for Case Western, that comes from librarians. There are three of us who provide main support. We have recruited other librarians to help uh, further back us up as demand has increased. Our IT personnel are not very involved in this process, so there's a difference there. Uh, this is really just historically um, how we came to decide to have exams on computers and who was most willing to get involved with this and provide the support and develop the knowledge base necessary and it's, so it's really a cultural thing as to how the librarians uh, came to be in this position. Uh, so we mainly have registrar personnel and librarians uh, with some support from IT. In any case, however, uh, there is a mix of people who need to support both the regular blue book type exams and take homes and so forth and the exams on computers and support personnel is certainly um, a key area that you have to look at. Uh, Dan mentioned some of the, the types of activities that the support personnel do, and I think we'll be covering those in some of our other topics. Um, in particular, um, starting at the, the very beginning of the semester and going all the way through, there are a number of areas that we need to provide support, and one of those areas we'll discuss. Um, do you want to move on okay, to sure. Registration. Yeah, very important part of getting to know what you have to support is knowing who you're going to need to support in the first place. And uh, at Loyola, the way we understand who is going to be using exams uh, on computer is through a, a web-based form. The students would get onto this form, they would be notified when it's available, when they can sign up, um, 
and through a registration process they would get a a link in an email message that would allow them through our intranet to download the software and understand there's some differences in terms of software again we're not going to get into specifics of programs and whatnot but the student would complete the download process all along the way of this registration it's very clear on all the pages that if there are issues questions concerns problems who they should call you don't want to leave them kind of wondering did they get my message you know is it lost in cyberspace somewhere you know we would be able to see this information later and quite often we'd be able to detect why a student didn't get the email response because when we saw the way they completed the information on the web form they gave us an AOL email address or they gave us their dog's name as their email address I mean they didn't quite follow it you know so we'd be able to follow up with them and get the software to them but this was all during a, a predefined time there was a period this began and a period it ended we decided to cut this off at a certain point because we needed to know numbers um, talk a little about later about assigning students to rooms it's it's a concern of ours to make sure we have enough rooms available to place students in uh, based on their registration be it uh, a, a computer user or a handwriter um, the, the web-based form information eventually also moves into our student information system and becomes a little check mark in the student's profile to tell the registrar whether or not they are going to be a computer user or not. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 85% of our students coming in with laptops, and that pretty much translates as about 85% of our students wanting to take their exams on the computer as well. So we're looking at maybe tweaking that registration process in the future since the preponderance is now computer users we're considering what the ramifications will be of just having the handwriters register we'll assume that everyone is going to use the computer and then have the handwriters be the exception since they are the smaller number but we're still looking at that cases concerns okay well our registration process does not interface with the student information system so currently how it's set up is we have an access database and what we do is uh, issue a print form which they fill out and hand into the registrar who then um, does the data entry of the information and what we collect on the student is their contact information who they are 1L, 2L, 3L, LOM um, if they want to use a lab computer because we do offer computers um, exams on lab computers and um, if they are using a laptop what are the specs of their system we want to know what we're supporting okay um, it, additionally we want to know not what classes they're taking but what exams they're planning to use their computer to, to take so we're really at this point not interested in anything but the computer exams and um, as Dan has said, we, you know, we, we will revolve, I'm, uh, evolve. I'm hoping that we can interface with the student information system and not only, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but not only track computer exams, but all exams, because that is um, in information that the registrar needs for scheduling rooms and support and whatnot. Um, so we do require the registration. It is very important because we need not only to know um, who is using computers, but if they're using a lab computer, do we have enough computers to support them? Um, again, some of this we will talk about later, but what happens if we have more demand than um, the number of computers? Um, you know, our policy has been to, to uh, accommodate students to, to the extent, whatever extent we can but we need to know that ahead of time so we do have this <coughs> registration process start early on in the semester giving us plenty of time to accommodate requests that come in um, again we need to know the number of laptops where are we going to put these people what rooms do we have enough power uh, are we going to place more than one exam in a room what are the issues involved with that um, also the proctor support and the the IT uh, support that the librarians provide, the um, on-call status that we need to maintain during exams, we need to be able to schedule people who to be in the building if, if problems do occur with an exam. So um, some issues with the registration that we hope to solve over time is to automate it a little bit more to reduce that data entry time. Um, some of the results we get out of the data, and you have copies of this, but I'll just go ahead and just mention this briefly uh, these are
are some of the overall statistics that we can get to publish to the administration because we want to keep them informed of trends. As DR was saying, you know, what are the trends? What are we facing next year? We have a whole new class of 1Ls. Are we going to have close to 100% participation? How are we going to support them? How many 1Ls are using labs? How many are using laptops? Are, are we, do we, will we see an increase in lab usage or a decrease? So these are things that we like to track with the data we collect. Another report that's useful, and these are just examples of a few that we use. This report um, is useful to me and others who uh, support the IT side of things, but also to the registrar. We like to know how many people, how many bodies do we have in different locations taking different exams. And the one, the third column over on the, the last column on the right is is a new component that we're adding and we're hoping to build on is, as I said earlier, to incorporate. We want to know what the writers are doing, too, because we have, like, parallel universes happening. We have the IT support, and then we've got the registrar doing the same old thing they've always done for the writers. Let's marry the two, and that's what we're looking to um, build for, for next year. And location. This is been built in as well in the past year is um, we've again the registrar was doing it separately now we've incorporated how many seats do we have in each room and how many bodies can we fit in there and so then she will then assign exams to different rooms and determine if and as you can see in in, in like this case at 8 30 in the morning we have uh, four different exams going on in in 157 and how is that going to affect the student um, experience. How long are those exams? Things like that that I think we need to, to grow with. You know, if we have a two-hour exam ending, you know, or a two-hour exam and then it ends before the three-hour exam, what happens to the poor three-hour people when everybody else is flat and their laptop closed and things like that? So the data we collect is very useful in helping us make the, the process better for everybody involved, the support people, the students, and whatnot. Um, and um, basically, real quickly, I just want to go through the order of events in this whole process is the registration process, which is really early on in the semester. Um, then we have the um, confirmation of the registration to the students so they can verify that whatever they submitted is, in fact, what we, we have in our database. Then we release the software, provide the support for the installation. Um, and once the installation is done, we do require a certification form to be submitted to the registrar. Students must certify that they've done what they're supposed to do. And we'll talk more about certification in a later session. So, um, and if I could ask you, um, on go back to the first report, <coughs> mm -hmm. I think if you scroll down on our statistics to show the, the variations in um, operating systems, I think is on there. Since we do not require people to have laptops, People come in with all kinds of combinations, and you can see our statistics. This is, I think there are about 12 different combinations that somebody could have of an operating system and Microsoft Word. And we have to support all that. When we go in to, to um, address an issue, they could have any one of these combinations. We don't know what's going to be facing us. And when you don't require that, that laptop requirement or certain conditions, uh, for people to have, then you're facing this. And this is something we ask for in registration um, as part of our data. Yes? Do you ever say to somebody, no, we can't, we can't use this laptop, or we can't afford it? I mean, that, that there you are, know, you can set minimum standards. Oh, yes, there are definitely minimum standards that we do have to observe. And we did do that. Um, we do publicize that very heavily. We don't support Macs. Um, and there are, uh, like, Windows 98, that's out. So we do have some standards, but still within that, there's obviously a wide range that we're allowing. Yes? So what's the meaning of do not support? You can't use it. You can't take an exam on a computer if you have Windows 98. Okay. It just won't happen. Right. And there's certain limits. I mean, and I think that's a totally different definition of do not support. Okay. That means that you print and you don't use a camera on that. And that's created for, for us. You do huge right. Well, yeah, I mean, there are limits. If, if your system can't comply with our requirements, then yes, we will write, or, or we have a lab. Or you can take a lab. That's why we yeah. do offer the labs. 
Um, and people do borrow laptops from other people. I mean, they can work around it, but they still have to meet certain standards if they want to um, want to comply. They either need a laptop that has these certain minimal standards, or they use a lab computer. And again, that would apply to you know, regardless of what software you're using or whether you're just letting them type, there are some issues that you need to consider and give yourself some boundaries as to how far you're going to bend over for these people. Yeah. Do you mean to say that you're going to put one of those names five? Um, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I said 98, 95. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're not You're right. You're right. It is 95. And, I've and already eliminated them, see? <laughs> From well. next year, they're gone. Um, but we're all right. We are seeing more issues with those older computers, but it was 95 that I meant. Thanks right. for pointing that out. And also, you need to consider what, you, what, what your institution has in place. For example, we have a software center where students who maybe don't have software required, for example, they can go there and get it for free. So think about all the existing... Um, resources that are in place in your institution and make sure that students are aware of all the resources available to them. Right. There are uh, some schools have purchased programs for laptops or computers. There's, um, again, software um, uh, programs they can download. And we are able to push people toward that. If you don't have that, then you have to consider the consequences. Is there a question? Yeah. You, you have three labs, correct? Yes. Um, when you've got four classes, registering to take an exam in a lab? Do you have one lab just for an exam and the other two labs for people to... We're, we're, we're going to get to that. Okay. Yeah, very good question. Um, right now, though, what, what you're seeing is how we're collecting the data that we have to have to make those kind of decisions. Um, yeah, uh, how do we disperse all these people? How many people want the labs? Oh, what kind of systems are people going to be working with? You see the large number now of XP users, for example. Um, and that's through this registration and the data we collect. Um, I think we're going to move on to the next topic, yeah. which I do believe is labs. It is labs. And yes. for Loyola, we're not using labs, as I mentioned before. We require all of our students. There we go. Stubborn. Uh, we require all our students, if they're going to use a computer for an exam, it's their own <coughs> computer. We do not offer labs for it at all. So the student. Is it either, always in that one? Yes. Yes. So we'll hear the. A little more detail on so, Case's lab experience. Yeah, we have, um, we decided to offer labs. We don't, again, have a, a laptop requirement. Our administration is very supportive of wanting to give the students the opportunity to use computers, and so we started offering labs. We, we do have three of them. Uh, the first issue we have to think about is what if we go over the demand, because we only have so many computers, and last spring we did. And we actually had some extra computers that were around and were able to set those up. There were about 13 extras. Um, yes? Do you, do you find people sign up that don't come and some that? Uh, uh, there's a, a little bit of that, but mostly people who do sign up do come. Now, we do have people who sometimes want to switch in because their laptop fails or something. So, um, or they, we occasionally have somebody who didn't sign up correctly. But generally, if they signed up, they are there. Um, so we still tend to have the demand, but we have a limited resource. We have not had it happen again when we've run out of spaces, but we are aware of the administration's desire to support the student's demand, and so we've had to think about plans. What if we run over for a particular exam? Would we have to rent computers? What would we have to do? And offering lab computers raises that issue, or would you just say, tough? You know, you signed up, this is how many we have. Uh, another issue here is, um, is basically what to do when there is a large demand and we have to close the labs. We have to close at least one lab for every exam because there are some people. In some cases, there's enough demand to close all three labs. And that impacts the other students who need to use those labs. We have had to come up with alternatives for those students to be able to go print their documents, they have to go elsewhere on campus. We have to put out notices that all three labs are going to be closed. And we have to alert other people in the law school. We actually had an admissions tour <laughs> come into one of the labs. And uh, that might have been enlightening for some of the prospective students, <laughs> uh, but uh, was not necessarily conducive to, to having an exam. So we actually, there's an elevator, and we actually put tape across it 
So besides signs, you know, exam going on. I mean, so they can't even get out the door. And, and so you have to, if you're using labs and spaces um, in your law school for this, you have to make people aware of it. You have to consider the impact on the other people who may be using that space. If there's a lab or if it's in a public place where other people would normally be working. Um, so those are some of the considerations as far as the, the spaces. Um, and then as far as dividing up, like how many are going to go into each room, um, splitting up the classes, we are going to get to that a little later because that gets into further scheduling of how all the different exams are coordinated. Yes? Uh, for Case Western, we are actually in the same unit. We're both in the library. Okay. Um, the library support. And the library controls the labs, doesn't it? Yes, we do. And at Loyola, though, they have a, a little bit different. Yeah, at Loyola, I'm part of the IT structure, but a main component of my job is making sure that all of the technical support of exams happens. And so I'm the one, I step up to the plate as kind of pseudo-supervisor of all those support people, even though they don't report to me. But during the exam time, I'm kind of like their pseudo supervisor. And then Chris over in the registration area um, does all the other proctor setup, exam printing, all the other side of the exams. Right. But an another take on that is it's, it's not us dictating anything. It's the admis administration saying, you will do this for the students no matter what. Make it happen. And that's, that's the role we play is making things happen. and making the process as efficient for us and as painless for us and for the students as well. And someone, re regardless of how you're set up, someone in, in your institution will need to address these things. It, we're just representative of some of the, the options. Um, and this actually, the idea of who's involved actually leads to another aspect of uh, using labs, which Megan will talk about, which is how our, our IT staff is involved at Case Western. Right. Um, you know, it just happens that they aren't very involved with exams, um, except in supporting the computers in the labs. Ahead of time, what we'll do is we do install a program on our computers, and I always try to make the process as simple as possible for a prospective exam taker. and for the proctors who, as we'll talk about in a little bit, know next to nothing about computers. So we need to make the process simple because we can't be there all the time. So in our case, what I'll do is I'll work with the IT support person who creates our lab image and say, please, just make a very simple uh, profile for the students to use for exams. So basically, they will log into an exam profile very simple, plain desktop, one icon, double click, and they can't accidentally log on differently or um, get into the wrong program by accident. And, you know, that historically, you know, was started back when we started using exam software. It was all very foreign. So maybe some of those measures are a little overkill right now because I think the culture is so used to it, but we've carried on with keeping it simple, and I think it is beneficial when you consider that the proctors won't know how to help a student who doesn't know how to help themselves. Um, so we just try and keep it a very seamless process for, so, for starting an exam. So the labs, if you just choose to use labs, you of course have a range of other issues to consider and we've offered some of them, including getting the computers ready and set up and some of these other issues about the use of that space. Um, I think we'll move on to the next topic. Okay. which. Um, Again, there's a, a possible issue with some schools in terms of certification. We have not chosen this route. We put it much back on the student to get their computer ready. If they have questions, we make ourselves available ahead of the exam process beginning. Uh, but we do. We right now are not requiring a certification, but that's different than Case's experience. All right. We do require certification. Um, we just want to make a, the student, again, just as in starting an exam, we want them in preparing for an exam be accountable for their whole exam experience. We don't want to do too much hand-holding except to make these deadlines and to make these forms that they must do. And um, basically, it, it makes the student assume the risk that what they are doing is 
something they are responsible for. And also, it's, it's very good in helping, especially the 1Ls, sort of get this all done well in advance because they don't understand the, at that point, early on in the semester, the pressures that are going to pile on later in the semester. And they don't need to be handling this, uh, you know, installation and whatnot late in the semester or, you know, an hour before their first exam. So these, these you know, artificial deadlines that we set are helpful to us and to the student in, in helping them prepare for the whole experience. And um, I, I really think that's just about it for certification. It's really not, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's, it, it's mainly, contract, it's, it's but it's mainly, just a yeah, risk. I think it, it alerts them that they have to do something. Even if they're using a lab computer, they're supposed to go up and test the, the you know, try it out. And it just gets them thinking about it and prepared. If they do have problems with their computer, it allows them an opportunity to get help quickly. Um, quick question. It is a form. Yeah. yeah, like our registration. Again, this is something that we're, we want to automate, you know, with online. Um, what does it simply say? It, it's, it just says, I, you know, state your name, certify that I have done A, B, and C, and, you know, assume the risk involved with taking, you know, using my computer to take an exam. And what it also does for us is when we do step into a situation in the middle of an exam and we want to assist the student, we know that the student signed this and said, I did A, B, and C. And when you walk into the middle of an exam and you see that they have version from last year expired, you know, or something like that, you can say, listen, you know, I, we, culturally, we, we try and help them as much <laughs> as we can. And but we, we could normally say, do, but we, we could, could give us that sort of to, out yeah. to say, you know, this is your responsibility. You didn't do what you needed to do. Yeah. So I think we'll move on to our next step. Uh, All right. Once we've gotten the student side kind of set up, now in terms of getting the exam process set up, an important part of that is our favorite, our proctors. <laughs> yes, the little old gentlemen and ladies that are retired and. Uh, as we kind of alluded to before, in terms of exam process on computers, our experience as well as Case has been, they're probably not going to be the techno-savvy people maybe you'd like them to be. It doesn't mean they can't be, <coughs> but generally they, they probably won't be. But in terms of training, uh, we do offer training. It is coordinated through our registrar's office. Chris, you want to speak a little bit about what you do with getting them okay. ready? Perhaps uh, to, to lead into this, on, on our room, room assignments, uh, computer users are in computer rooms, writers are in writer rooms, writing rooms. All rooms are cut in half for capacity, so there's room in case there's an open book exam to put out their materials. Now, when we first started using um, uh, laptop computers for exams, we sort of picked the proctors that we thought could handle the situation. And first, it was just, are you comfortable reading the instructions? I mean, do you actually know what you're saying? You know what Windows is? Do you know how to start a computer? And we have now gotten to the point that all the proctors need to know this. And we started uh, proctor training, and we bring the proctors in two weeks prior to the exam. We actually go over the exam software with them. Uh, starting in the spring semester, for the first time, we allowed students to reboot during the exam. We never allowed this before for the main reason is that um, the first semester we used laptop computers, we rebooted a student's computer, and the student wanted the time back that it took us to reboot the computer. And if we have 50 students in the room, there's no way a proctor can determine you know, how long it took to reboot. So our current practice is, um, all the students are given a half sheet of paper at their desk that says, if your computer freezes during the exam, you know, raise your hand. The proctor will come over, and the first thing the proctor will say is, we suggest you write. If the student wants to reboot the computer, the sheet says, we suggest you spend no more than two minutes doing this. Um, the, the proctor puts in, uh, actually, it's a Julian date that they put in so that we know that the proctor rebooted the computer and not the student. So it has, uh, it, it worked for us this spring semester. We had 47 uh, laptops freeze during the exam, and of the 47, 45 got rebooted, and there was not an issue with the student asking for time back. Oh. And Megan, you want to talk about our training? Well, our proctor, our registrar does plan a proctor luncheon to give them their schedule, where they're going to be assigned, whatnot. I will take those who are assigned to computer rooms um, for a demo to show them the software that we'll be using and to give them um, the instructions um, to look at that they will need to follow. And it is a sheet of paper, color-coded, and you will read this, you will read this. And so basically, they just have to read the sheet. They, we don't expect them to do um, any 
um, troubleshooting for a student, although we will do that for them. Our policy is a little different than and Loyola. You'll be, you'll be hearing about our policies yeah. of what we do in the rooms and how that affects proctors and other personnel. Right. So basically, if there is a problem during an exam, a computer freeze or something, they are to call us. And that's really the extent of proctors um, with exams. Uh, moving on then to the next topic. Yeah, as we look then for what the student is going to do when they're ready to get out of an exam, um, based on the software that chosen, that's chosen, the technology that's available to the student in their exam room, need to consider where that student is going to save their physical exam. Uh, the Loyola experience so far is everyone saves it to a floppy disk that we provide the student. We give them the disk as they come into the exam room. Uh, there's some information they complete on a label, so if it gets separated from other exam materials, they know whose disk it is. Um, that disk then gets collected at the end, taken back to a central printing location that's staffed by uh, people from the registrar's office, and the exams are printed, uh, combined with possible handwriters, and then shipped off to the faculty for grading. Uh, our process currently is exactly the same, um, saving to floppies. Although we are encountering more systems, laptops coming in without floppy drives, so we will be trying some network saves in the fall, but probably not an across-the-board save. We'll still go back to the floppies. I think, you know, again, culturally, we're a little more conservative, so we will stay with the floppies um, mainly, but we'll try some network saves. Once you have the exams uh, rolling, or at least the process started, one other possible place you may need to get some support for are working with the faculty. Um, the registrar staff, my staff, we interact with the faculty to kind of get the faculty ready as they're preparing the exam. Many times the faculty want to include specific instructions on the exam itself, dealing with handwriters and computer users be it word count, page count, character count, all kinds of different issues. Um, you know, we'll help the faculty on that. You know, usually it's our, our folks in faculty support um, that are assigned to do a lot of that typing and we'll work with that staff particularly to help them understand that process. Um, we've calculated uh, extensive charts uh, to make it easy for the student that if a faculty ends up saying 3,000 words, well, what does that really mean when you type or you handwrite or whatever? We have these comparative charts so that we can translate that into the instructions and that helps the student understand maybe a little better what the faculty member is trying to get at in their instructions. <coughs> case? Yeah, we don't, we work on a case by case basis with the faculty. The registrar will send out a message reminding faculty as you create your exam ins, uh, instructions, please remember that there will be people typing your exam unless, you know, the faculty says no typers. But um, in any case, reminding them that if they do have line limits or if they um, do require them to start an answer on a fresh uh, page, that those instructions are included in, with the exam instructions. So they usually consult with me and I will help them um, determine how to write the instructions for both um, exams. And sometimes they will write a separate exam for writers or sometimes they'll combine the instructions. It just depends on what the faculty wants to do. Another consideration is just in terms of your overall culture, like how much do you really want to do with this? How much involvement do each of your main areas on campus need to be involved? Um, we very much support the student experience. Um, as Chris mentioned, you know, our dean pretty much says to all people that during exams, your job description is to support exams in whatever way you can. Um, we do put a lot of onus back on the student, though. We have a lot of the information concerning running an exam up on a website. We publish that web link in various places on electronic signboards, on email, um, on places where students regularly would look for other information and put the responsibility back on them to make sure they adhere to the registration deadlines, the download of the software deadlines, uh, that they're aware of those times on campus where we have kind of a help desk available, you know, it's kind of like here we are, we're putting ourselves up in the administration, you know, we're inviting you to come with your questions. Um, we tried this help desk setup this past semester and found probably about 100 to 150 students come by during the sessions we had and talk with us about their experience, whether they had trouble downloading the software, um, what, what their troubles were, if they just had 
you know, general questions about it. It was a way for them to get individual support. Before doing the help desk sessions, we had done question and answer sessions. We published these sessions at a room much like this with presentation technology. We'd sit there and demo things, but we found the return was almost nil. We may have two or three people show up. Um, I don't know what it was. It could be scheduling, could be just being shy, could be thought they knew it all. Um, you know, we, we thought we'd turn it around, be a little more out there in their faces. And you know, we're in Southern California, so we can kind of schedule things outside, not have to worry about sinking in the mud like we do around here. Um, so you know, we could have these events out in you know pedestrian areas where we knew we could get a lot of traffic. One thing we did find out, it's rather hard to read a laptop screen at 4.30 in the afternoon when the sun's beating down on you. So we're probably going to move them to a little more shady area the next time around. But um, and we found that really helped. And we're going to try and adapt that model, maybe even have more sessions because it didn't seem to be so fruitful. But our, our take on it is we want the students to be involved with it, take some responsibility for it on their own, that we're there to help. And during exams, you've already mentioned that um, they have some limited support, but then right. they, they, they have to write. Right. And to contrast a little bit of that, um, we again have very, of course, heavy support from our administration, our same thing. During exams, that's, that's your job. Um, and we generally have a, a very strong philosophy, of course, of, of service toward our, our students. Uh, during exams, that, that greatly expands. Exam time is an extraordinarily stressful time. For law students, it's very high pressure. And when you go into one of those classrooms, packed classroom with students taking an exam, you can smell fate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just uh, the, the intense pressure that is there. And we don't want to add to that pressure or complicate it um, by having students have to worry about a lot of issues that involve the technology. So we've tried to come up with as many ways to help minimize that. That means we have gotten involved throughout the whole process. Um, much like Loyola, we're very involved in the early part of the process where students are installing software or worrying about if their computer will function properly. We do have sessions for students in Cleveland. It gets a little cold uh, <laughs> at times, so we're not going to be outside, but we do have sessions, we do offer office hours. Anybody could come in the library and ask for help if they're having issues with their computer or installations. Um, we have the certification to help get people aware. A lot of pre-exam support, um, whatever they need. We have students come in the day before exams and say, my laptop died, and we try to get them in a lab if we can. We do whatever we can to support them. Um, if you know it's right before the exam or whatever. Uh, then during the exams, we I think is where we have the real contrast. We have an extensive support system. Uh, our librarians, these are librarians, are on call all the times that exams are being offered. That's from if they start at 8:30 in the morning till the last one is over. And one semester we had them running till 10 o'clock at night. We also provide the support on Saturday. We have Saturday exams. There is someone on call at all times. We have a schedule. And we have it divided up. You do labs, you do laptops. Um, and we have cell phones. And the proctors have limited responsibility. They identify someone needs help, they call us. And we get there and we go in. And we try to resolve whatever the issue is. Um, yes? Where is your registrar while all this is going on? It sounds to me like you're doing the registrar's job. We actually are doing. The, at this point, we are going in and dealing with issues involving the computers. They are still managing the overall process. I guess you might say the distinction there. Um, well, so. I, I mean, a, a lot of like the, like for example, the database that helps with the scheduling and whatnot, that is created for them. They do do the normal registrar type responsibilities, sending the exams where they belong, picking them up you know, printing the exams, whatnot. But we are we are there. We, the registrar does not get pulled into any of the IT support. But what you might, this is the very technical, the, the computer is frozen. Or, and in our, in, our, in our situation, they do not provide that support. And they haven't since 
Well, when my position started, it was pretty much purely you handle it. Right. Yeah. And that's that's culture. Yeah. That's culture. Is that right. they don't even have hours. They don't have hours after a certain time, so they're not available. We go in. It could be a hardware problem. We've had monitors blow out. Whatever it is, we do it. So that's IT to me, not Yeah. Well, it is, but and that's exactly it. And that's culturally. But some, yeah. yeah, somebody, and at Loyola it's different. At other schools it be different. Well, the point is, somebody you might, mention, to do it. you might mention that I was previously. And actually, in Megan's position was in the IT department, mm -hmm. so there's a little bit. that yeah. strike me. First, I, I would not want that responsibility. The stakes and exams are just too high. And librarians have library work to do. And obviously, during this intense period, you're being taken away from library related work to do what, in my mind, is either IT or register. But you know, I understand the culture of every yeah. school. It and then, and we see it as, I mean, this is an expertise we've developed, and it's a service, mm -hmm. and it's a very service-oriented um, focus. Can yes. I answer the question over here, too? On, on, uh, I am there. Yeah. Uh, and if we do get a call, which we, from time to time, we get from the proctor saying that somebody wants a, a technical person, our response is we will not provide it. Um, you know, we keep telling the students, you, you know, if something happens to your computer, you start writing. You're using valuable time for, say, like either myself or an IT person to get there. There was a thread on, on um, technoids about this very issue about um, how much time, who makes the decisions, mm -hmm. about how much time a student gets. And, and it was interesting to read everybody's response, and it's just very, varies yeah. from school to school. And I know we have a couple of quick questions, uh, so I want to keep moving, but yeah. I just want to say, uh, uh, I'm a library, I run a computer lab in a library, and, and I give exams there. I find that ordinary library, regular library work tends to dwindle during this time. There's just not a lot of room. Well, there's always something. And we, what we do is we reorganize our schedule. For example, the, um, people can't do reference, you cannot do reference and provide the support when you're on call. So the other librarians yeah. shift responsibilities. It's just a prioritizing. And it, it, there's a lot of work to be done. Exactly. All right. In our case, if we told the uh, faculty that our librarians are not going to be there to support their research right. when they have deadlines for publications, we would probably have usually no, the it, students who are trying to spread their papers, the yeah. students who are taking the exams, and the faculty who are not supporting it. But in, what I'm trying to figure out here, mm -hmm. if you remove yourselves from this process, right. would this process run? Because that's what we're mm -hmm. managing. Right, and that, that I think could continue on here, um, just getting into what kind of support is provided. Somebody has to provide the support, or, or not. I mean, or to not that extent. Or I mean, not to the extent. extent. We actually go in again during the exams, assist people with whatever they need, uh, and try to resolve it. Um, we do give them the time from when they raise their hand to when the problem's resolved. We figured out it's probably no more than 20 minutes for us to get in there and get taken care of. We may have load patches. We give them opportunities to get a lab computer. We go that far. That's pretty extensive. You don't have to do that. Um, and then after the exams are over, we support the registrar's office with printing if they have problems uh, printing exams and so forth. And I think we're, we're moving into the next area, which is the issues, which is these additional issues um, that are coming out of these questions. Yeah, for us, the, the one issue I wanted to, to drive home, and it kind of relates to some of this, is as this process grew, as students became more dependent, like using a laptop, this all started as a, an insular process all within the registrar's office. Mm -hmm. And as this evolved, as more people des decided, yes, I want to use my computer to take the exam on, it grew beyond what that small staff could really manage. So that's how the IT people, in our case, became involved. That was our choice. You know, Case has been using the library support to, to be that back end support. You know, now it's kind of a, a divided duty with the IT people being that primary pre exam setup kind of role, uh, possibly a quick interaction during the exam, but extremely rare. And then on the back end, as a student may have a problem with the software at the end, they finish the exam, they're closing out, and there's a technical issue. Those students, first go to the registrar's office, where the registrar is not able to handle it, or there's such a push that they don't want to have people just waiting an inordinate amount of time, they, in the registrar's office, know that there are certain IT people they can call saying, we need you over here, we've got a line. 
because we have many exams that may finish all at the same time. Could be one from each exam, could end up being five people, could be three from each exam, could be 15. The most I've seen in my experience is maybe about six or seven. And typically they're very quick problems. You know, to date, I've only seen one really weird issue that took a day and a half for me to solve. But again, you know, in the bottom result of all this, we didn't lose any tests. And I keep hammering that to both the faculty and the students to not be afraid of the process, that it is virtually foolproof, that they're going to get that. And that's another issue in all this. You need to keep hammering home for those people who are a little afraid of it. You know, student always has the option out. They can handwrite. They can even decide to handwrite the day of a test. You know, they, they just have a weird issue with their computer. They're too afraid to risk getting in, taking a test, and something go wrong. They just have to communicate that to the registrar so that their uh, exam is in the appropriate room. Yes, ma'am. When you said that you didn't lose any exams, was mm -hmm. that due to the process that you had or due to the software? I'd say it's both, but I want to give more credit really to the preparation, making sure that everything is set in motion ahead of time. You know, certainly the, the exam software is going to play a role there if there's some interaction between that and the computer it's on, though. That's something we could really attend to ahead of time. So I would encourage them, though we don't have a, a true certification process, a form that someone completes, we strongly encourage people to do a, a pre-exam practice with it. Yeah. And, I, and some of the questions I think have raised some very important issues that, that we have a case. And that is the amount of time that's spent on this. There's a lot of work here that we've described. There's certainly, there's a continuum of how far you can go in providing some of these services. But, but there are many of these services that, that do need to get done. And what we have found ourselves is in trying to support the students, we are getting further and further drawn in to things like room scheduling um, and so forth. And Megan will speak a little bit about that as, as far as our database. Right, um, just supporting the database and the growth of it and the more components that we're adding to support <coughs> the registrar um, needs. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, these are issues that you really need to think about. Who are you, you know, traditionally does this position go to this extent of support for exams? Maybe not, but does it fit, does it fit with your organization? Is there anyone else who could do this? I mean, these are things that you need to consider because, um, you know, depending on how far your administration wants you to go, you need to decide, you know, how you're going to, to make these things happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's ongoing development of adding components to the database, making it more streamlined to reduce the time spent, you know, so the registrar doesn't have to do data entry. So students can, um, and interact with with their registration on their own without interfacing with a person. So there are things that we can do to improve but, the process. But what we're drawn into is also now the written exams. And in our reports, you see, we're having to schedule rooms for the written exams as well. And starting to keep data on that, because that's part of the whole picture for supporting this, this service. Um, trying to decide how many exams go in which room and issues regarding that. We're having to figure that out through our database. and. The, the important thing is, again, that there, there are all these, we've gone through this whole list of things and how far you can go or not. Somebody has to do it. And in our organization, we seem to be the best people at the moment to do it. In terms of time, we actually track our time. The librarians do time tracking, um, which, by the way, we have 10 librarians overall. That includes our director. Um, but, uh, but the librarians are tracking time. We tracked time on this particular service. For fall 2002, we spent, there were three of us, really four, but mainly three of us, almost 400 hours during the semester were devoted to exam support. That's from August through the end of the semester. That includes things, though, like the database, a huge amount of database support and organization um, development for the database that includes producing the reports, helping the registrar. The actual time, of course, being on call is an immense amount of time. Well, that's almost 100% of our time during that exam period. This does not include the time spent by personnel in the registrar's office and how much they need to devote in addition to what they normally would devote to just a written exam. And so, and we do go pretty far, but you have to think about Again, when you're moving toward allowing people to have exams on computers, uh, it's easy to say, we're going to do this. It's a great idea. It's great service. Yeah, we got software. 
but the devil is in the details. And that's, that's especially in this case, you need to think about is it who's going to do it and who's right for it? Ultimately, where is it going to evolve? The opportunity cost. Someone mentioned that, you know, well, our faculty need this, we need, there's other things. Yes, there's a lot of other things we could be doing. What are the priorities in your organization? And who do you have to support those priorities and if this is a priority? Yes. One thing I, I'm concerned about is exactly, literally how you put people in the room. Because, you know, what, if I were sitting over there, I could see all three of those laptops. Mm -hmm. And so how do you seat students so that they can't look down at the person in front of them, um, you know, writing the same thing in their writing? We actually try to stagger them. Mm -hmm. So there'd be, again, we, we take the room capacity, we divide it by half, and then it's every other seat going through. Yes. Yeah, they, they, we haven't had any complaints. Yeah, That's, um, we had one complaint in Proctor saying she thought somebody else was looking at somebody else's laptop and the students says, I wear glasses, the, I didn't even wear And the wear labs, them. they're, they're yeah. like sardines, you know, they're just packed in. We've never had any issues, students complain about that. They also don't seem to be bothered particularly when we go in and squeeze through the aisle in the middle of the exam and try to assist someone. So that, that's a kind of a cultural thing, yeah. Technical question. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are talking about saving to floppy disk only and, and starting to save to network drives. Have any of you looked at to saving to USB keys where that's a possibility? Yeah, that's it's also a possibility too. Mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't yeah. looked at that yet, yeah, but it is a possibility down the road for us too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Question, question over here. Uh, I just have a basic question. I think I, I don't know if maybe I'm interpreting this wrong. Your librarians are currently the ones scheduling the rooms for any exams, either mm -hmm. written exams or. No, we're not scheduling it. We're, we're, we're helping with the database that helps the registrar do the right. scheduling. Right, that's a good clarification. We actually... We develop the database oh, that, that they keeps use. track of the data. They put the data in and actually do, they do the we scheduling. Don't do, we don't do any data entry. It, um, the, the registrar will input the information about the courses into the database, and they run their own reports and use that information to do the scheduling. And they, they decide. So we, we actually started last semester doing the exams on the computers. Reference to her question, we pretty much have a huge size of rooms, and we had like about 30 or 40 students, but we did stagger two by by two seats in the middle mm -hmm. and just scoot them back. And when you have the tiers, do people behind the camp look down? Well, what we do is we start it well, when we skip a row as they come in, oh. and then we start putting in in between. And, and one thing is when you're on the side, it's with the laptops, it is hard to see. So when you have that staggering, I think that does reduce the chance of them having a good view. Any more questions? More questions? Um, very good points here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, with reference to your procedures that you did with the students where they were having exams and they had a technical problem, mm -hmm. and since there were no technical persons on hand, you told them to go to Blue Book. Do they continue? Like we don't actually. Stop, we actually don't. We actually try to resolve it. If there's a tech, we do. And, and, and one yeah, point on that, that too is yeah. we, we do keep um, incident reports on every in intervention so that if it goes back to the administration, the student has issue over how things were handled. We have a record of how we handled it so that we can. But um, we actually react. try to resolve the technical yeah. side. We have enough expertise to try to deal with it. We do give them the option. We say, you, do you want to deal with this or do you want to write? But usually they say, I want to keep going. And we try to resolve it. If It's only when we just, there's just no way. Will we? No, what, what I was trying to clarify uh -huh. is if there's no way at that point to rectify that problem, do right. they have to start all the way over from the beginning or they continue from where it is? They continue and then they get the time from when they alerted the proctor to when they started up again on the exam, whether it's written or whether it's on a computer. So they're, they're allocated the time again? Yes, they're okay. given, usually as we, we, it's usually no more than like 20 minutes. And that's from the time they raise their hand till we run down there, help them, and get them going again. And they have that added on to their time. The downside to that is they get 20 extra minutes, but everybody else gets up, you know, and is leaving. And so that, that's kind of an issue. Um, but, but that's how we work that. And that had become an issue for us, the students that were given that extra time. You know, when we did try this a long time ago, complained that it was very disruptive as they were trying to wrap up because everyone else was trying to walk out. That's why we totally stop giving extra time yeah, for, the, extra for the time reboot. Yeah. Um, and if it is a case where they can't get the computer going, they handwrite, we just take whatever they did finish on the, the diskette and marry it with the handwritten portion and then that goes to the faculty member. Okay, one more question and we'll okay. kind of... 
wrap up here. Question. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, those of you who allow the students to use their own computers, and if you're uh, supporting Word, do you tell them how often they should automatically save? Do you we yeah. welcome the students to, to save as often as they want. The particular software we're using automatically in the background saves every minute. Every minute. Every so minute. Yeah, yeah we, we do give them that information to yeah. provide them with a comfort level, but of course they could save as much as they want. Okay, right. But you can go in and change how often it's saved. And so is there a way Well, you can go in more often and do it. You can't really adjust. The, the student can't go in and say, well, I want to save it every five seconds or something. Yeah. It's pre-programmed, the software we're using is pre-programmed in there. But they can always take a quick second and click on file, drop down to save, and know it's saved again. Um, I think we're out of the end of our time. I want to thank you all for coming. We are, uh, <laughs> we'll be glad to answer any more questions. All of us will be around, I think, during the conference. And uh, again, thank you for coming. Thank you.